Okay, let's do this. So this week we're gonna talk about the skills and states of the databases and how you can configure those. So let's get started. Okay, so if you open your database and go inside your skills section, this is where all the skills of your game without any exception are stored. This includes all the skills for your enemies, but also for your players. Now, there's something really, really, really important that you need to know about the two first skills, which is attack and guard. As you can see, there's a little note at the bottom right corner that says that this corresponds to the attack command. So whenever you're inside combat and your character will select the default attack command, it will actually run this specific skill. So yes, this is considered as a skill. And the same goes for the guard command. So whenever your characters will activate the guard default command, this will activate the skill number two. So if you want to modify those skills, it's entirely up to you to configure them as you'd like to. Now, let me run you through exactly all the specific things that you can do with skills. First, you have the description, which is a quick text that your characters will have access to see exactly what is the skill supposed to do. For instance, the dual attack here performs a series of attacks on an enemy. So it's that simple. Now, the skill type is basically, is it a magic skill, is it a special skill, or not at all. For instance, once again, inside our enemies, we have the dual attack, which is considered a special skill. Now, you can go under the type sections and onto the second column, which is skill types, you can create your own types. So for instance, I could create my third type, which is neither magic, it's not special, it's actually simply physical skills, which I... I'm particularly fond of because I keep specials for really, really unique and interesting skills, magic for sorcery and whatnot, while physical are more like double attacks and stuff like that that we have over here. So I just, that's usually what I do when I create my own games. So physical skills, special and magic, or none of the above. Now the MP cost is basically the amount of mana points that the skill costs to be able to be used. So in this case it's zero, but if I wanted I could just give it a cost and if the player doesn't currently have 15 mana points, then it will be able to use the skill. The same applies for the TP cost. Now the scope. It's a brand new thing that changes with RPG Maker NZ over the MV is that the specific scope, which basically means the target of the skill is a lot more configurable. So first you can select whether it affects an enemy and ally, enemy and ally or the user entirely. Now you have the number which basically like is it one enemy, is it one ally, is it all of them, whatever you'd like. And you can also basically have it target a specific status. So for instance, is the ally that you target alive or is it or does the character that your ally is targeting, does he has to be dead or unconditional? Which basically means that it doesn't matter. He can be alive or dead, no one cares. So the scope is basically who is the still gonna target and is there any conditions that need to be respected to be able to use that still. Also, the occasion is when can you use that specific still? Is it always only in battle, only from the menu or never? Never is basically if that was a passive still. Moving on into the invocation tab, you have the speed, which increases based on the agility of the character, the chance that the skill will go first. You have the success amount, which are, what are the chances that the skill succeeds. Repeat, so how many times is the skill going to perform? Since here we have a dual attack, which performs a series of attack to one enemy, it repeats two times, because what a skill does, it's going to attack the enemy twice. If we wanted, we could just use a repeat 4, and it will attack one enemy 4 times, and so on and so on. The TP gain is the amount of TP points that the character is gonna gain per hit. That means that, once again, if we were to attack the character 4 times, and the TP gain was 5, then overall the skill would give 20 points to our character. Now for the hit type is basically what type of skill is it? Is it a magical attack? Is it a physical attack? Or is it a certain hit? So what does that mean? Physical attack and magical attacks are things that can be avoided. So it can be dodged, it can be reflected, and so on and so forth. While certain hit bypasses every single parameter, the skill 
if the success is 100% and asserted it, this skill will succeed 100% of the time. Now, if it's a physical attack with 100% and the character had a 10% ch chance of evading physical attacks, that means that yes, there's a 100% chance that the physical attack will work, except that there's a 10% chance of those considered that the target may evade the specific attack. So this can happen. So certain hits are really more like for skills that you try to heal one of your ally. Definitely try to definitely keep in mind that you need to make this a certain hit because you don't want your ally to try to dodge your heals. Doesn't make sense. Now the animation part is what is the animations that comes with this specific skill when it's used. So there's a whole bunch that is stored inside the database once again, as you can see over here. So just select the animation you want to play when the, somebody is using this specific skill. And there you go. Now the message is what message will appear inside the combat screen whenever the skill is used. Required weapons is if any type of weapons are required to be able to perform a specific skill. So let's say that you absolutely must have a bow to be able to use the skill, then that will be uh, how you can configure this. So now for the damage part. It seems a little bit complicated with the formula you have here, but don't worry, it's actually a lot simpler than it looks like. So first you have the type of damage you do. So it can be directly simply HP damage or mana points damage. If it's a healing skill, you need to select the HP recover or mana points recover, whatever you want to heal. And the drain section is basically if you want to inflict damage on a target and also heal the character that used the skill to recover HP or mana points. Now the element section is basically, is there an element attached to the skill? Is it the element, the same element that the character usually does with his normal attacks? If it's not, you can specify the type of element for that specific skill. So if it was, let's say, a unique spell that was testing fireballs, then the element will be fire. It doesn't matter what usual element that the character attacks with with his ice rod. The, the spell specifically always does fire damage. Now, the formula. So first you have a hey dot attack multiplied by four minus b dot defense multiplied by two. So what the hell does that mean? It's very simple. A always refers to the user's parameters and B always to the target's parameters. So right here, what we have is that the user of the skill attack, so it is attack power, we can multiply this by four. So let's say for instance that we had 10 attack points. That will means that the formula will pick 40 damage and then we will pick the target's defense. So B dot defense. And multiply that by two and that will give us the exact damage of or still that's going to have like to the target so if the target had a lot of defense it will take a lot less damage than if it didn't have a lot of defense now to see the possibility of all those parameters what you can use just over the formula for a couple seconds and you have all those explanations repairing once again so atk represents attack MAT is magic attack, AGI is basically agility, and so on and so on and so on. And so, what I meant, if you saw my last video on actors and classes, what I meant by the trait definition here or total garbage is because if you wanted, you don't have to, but if you wanted, you could do A dot defense multiplied by 4, subtract by the target's attack multiplied by 2. So basically now you use the defense of the user to attack and the attack of the target to defend. It's super confusing, but the point here is that you can make a lot of cool stuff and cool steals because you have entirely freedom on how you want to calculate things. So if you wanted, you could also do, let's give you another example. Let's say users attack multiplied by four plus the user once again magic attack multiply by four minus so let's just go with this here so we're not confused so minus the target's defense multiply by two plus his magic defense multiply by two once again so basically here we have a skill that not only uses whoops made a little bit of issue here okay all right so here we have 
a skill that not only uses the attack power of the user, but also is magic attack power, and is subscribed by the target's defense and magical defense as well. So that's what I mean by you can do a lot of cool stuff with your skills, not also have to always use attack and defense, you could use like, okay, well, let's go with my luck instead. So the luckier the target is, the more chances are that you will do high damage to the target. So it could entirely be like a.lock minus b.lock. So the user's luck minus the target's luck. So as you can see, you can have a lot of fun this way and make a lot of cool interesting skills because you have the total control on what are the formulas that goes with it. Now the variance is basically to give a little bit of, well, it says it, variance to the damage of your skills. So once the formula is calculated, it will take that number and then either add or subtract up to 20% of that number. So that means that if my formula here was a.lock minus b.lock, if that was giving us 100, 20% 20 of 100 will be 20. So with a variance of 20%, that means that the damage here will do something between 80 to 120 damage to the target because of the variance. And also you have the possibility of do you want to create critical hits or not. Okay, so moving on into the FX. What exactly does that do? So if I pick the Steel Air Tranquilizer, number 19, as you can see here, that's the head state paralysis 50%. So what does that mean? That means that you can inflict a state on the target that you're using the Steel on. So to give you an example here, if I was to try Tranquilizer on one of my enemies, this still basically deals damage, but also has a 50% chance to have the status Paralysis on that enemy. And so it adds the states. You will also have a lot of different effects. As you can see here, it can recover HP either by percentages or a specific amount. The same goes with recover mana points or gain TP. You can also apply or remove states and you can also buffs add parameters that buffs for amount of turn the, the allies or remove buffs and or debuffs so basically you can reduce the attack for four let's say for four turns here you can reduce the attack of your target by four turns or you could remove the debuffs entirely on the attacks so that's something you can do or you can also have for instance grow the maximum HP of the target every time that you use that steel by one. So, I mean, that will be a broken steel, but that's possible to do. You can also have a steel, have the target learn a new steel and use special effect like escape and so on and so on. So basically that's what the FX does. In that case, for that specific steels, you have 50% chance to use paralysis, which is a state that we're gonna cover right here and now. So what exactly is a state? Now, if you go at the tab here that says states, you will be able to find all the default states available to you by RPG Maker NZ. And also that's where you can create your own states or modify the parameters, whatever. So the state that we were looking for was paralysis. And so inside states, the ID 12 paralysis, here is the configuration and what it does specifically. So paralysis, basically we have one restriction that means cannot move. So that means that the character affected by, spar by paralysis cannot perform anything. Also, the SV motion is basically what uh, the animation of the battler, what it's going to do. So it's going to try to perform right his sleep. And the SV overlay is kind of the animation over the head of the character when he's affected by this specific state. In that case, that will be the paralysis one. Now, the conditions to remove that specific state it has, it removes automatically at the end of the battle, or it can be removed by restriction. So it uh, will be replaced by a new state with a different action restriction. Auto removal timing means that the turn hand, you can have action and or none. Basically that means that it will automatically return whenever you have performed between three and three turns in that case. It could have been one to three. So that means that every time that the turn ends, there's a chance that the states will be removed. In that case, that means that automatically once we reach three turns, the paralysis is removed and the target is able to move again. Also, as you can see inside the traits, once again, we have something new, which is evasion rate minus 100%. That means that 
the character is 100% less likely to be able to evade attacks because it is currently paralyzed. And finally, to finish, you have the messages that basically, if an actor is inflicted with the states, here's what the battle screen is going to show, and the same goes if that's an enemy, and if the state goes on, or if the state is removed. So these are the messages that the system will show up during the battle. There's also two more options we haven't explored here, is that it removes by damage. That means that whenever the target takes damage, there's an X% percent chance that the state will be automatically removed and also removed by walking. So let's say for instance that your characters were poisoned, you have the state here poison, you could have so that after one other step on the map, it doesn't matter, the poison disappears and so the character isn't afflicted by poison anymore. Now the state by default dead is the one where the character is entirely die and some of you might have had the question that what if I want my character to still gain experience points even if he's dead at the end of a combat? Now that's where you can fix this because as you can see by default the experience gain by a character when he's dead is multiplied by zero. That means that he doesn't gain any experience. Now if you want you can simply delete this because I'm really not a fan of this but it's up to you really and how you want to create your game. But you can delete it and simply by applying this change Whenever your character will be dead, even at the end of the combat, is still gonna get experience. Okay, so that's it for today's video on skills, but also states, how you can configure those inside your database to have them perform the exact way you wish. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave some comments, whatever, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Okay, bye!